Uh, we have Apurva Sharma, Dr. Apurva Sharma from India. We thank you so much for your. Hey, uh, you hi, thank you. Thank you for the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we thank you so much for your lecture. We are so uh, enthusiastic with your cooperation with us, and we're waiting for your uh, lecture. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I hope my slides are visible. You can start now. We can hear you, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay, okay, fine. So basically in this session, I will be discussing about the artifacts in Humphrey visual field. Uh, and this is basically uh, like patient and the perimetrist and the doctor oriented. So we'll be discussing about the different points and what do we look for in it. So to start with, first of all, we should know that what are the artifacts in uh, um, different artifacts. So the artifacts, the common causes can be patient inexperience, patient inattention, misalignment of the trial lens of eye head or eye head misalignment, ptosis or droopy lids, lack of proper patient instruction or super in supervision, and patient anxiety. So the lack of proper patient instruction, supervision, and the patient in anxiety is we can just consider it as one. And now we'll be just uh, seeing the different types of uh, the artifacts which will be caused by this. So to start with, here is the first one where we can see that there are four dots which we can be seen surrounded by the black part. So this is basically in a more better way if we see that the initial points, the patient has responded and that's why the patient, that there it is white and later the response are zero. So this tells that the patient was attentive in the beginning of the test Whereas later as the test progressed, the patient went inattentive or lack or tired, um, then the patient stopped responding. So this is basically seen in most of the false negative error or this can be, a, this can be called as clover leaf pattern. The other thing which we see here is basically the, it is high false positive. It means that we see a totally white scotoma. It means that the patient was not attentive or was so enthusiastic to just keep on pressing the button. In this, we basically see that all the thresholds are near 50 or 40. It's above 40 or 45. So this is what the response was, result of white scotoma. And one thing which we need to understand is, normally the, the pattern deviation will be better than the total deviation. But in false positive only is the case where the pattern deviation is worse than the total deviation. So again here, because this is like patient is continuously responding or we can call it as a trigger happy patient. This will cause such kind of white scotomas and this is also a kind of artifact. The other thing is what we on the left side of your screen you see is there is a normal field whereas on the right side of the field, you see an arcuate defect, which is there. So this is basically caused because of the lens, the lens which is used while performing the test. When the lens is centered, definitely the overall field vision will be good. If the lens is decentered, we will find such kind of defect. So this is how it explains when we see, so the lens has to be, the trial lens has to be through the center of the pupil to start with, it should not be misaligned. So this is very important for the perimetrists or the technicians who are performing the test. Coming to the next slide, if you see here, there is a complete rim which is there, black part. This can be caused because of the a thick rim lens which is used. Basically for perimetry, we should use a thin rim lens. Nowadays, the machine is coming with automated lens. There is no need of checking or the changing of the lens. But still in few of the regions of the world or the country, we still use manual lenses and the rim lenses should be preferred over the rimless lenses. The another reason for this kind of defect can be the position of the lens from the eye. If the position of the lens from the eye of the patient during the testing procedure is away, again that this rim can cause again a field defect. As here in the picture, in the left side, we can see that the overall field, which can be seen by the, by the patient when the lens is placed away from the eye, the overall field is less. Whereas when the, when the lens is on the appropriate position from the patient's eye, 
the amount of field which will be seen by the patient will be more so again the relative position of the lens also matters while performing the perimetry test now here is another effect or the defect which we can see is basically the effect of the face tilt the effect of the face tilt is basically will cause a superior defect which may be because if you have seen here in the picture the patient chin is not al properly aligned and this bro will cause a superior field defect so this is again a result of that the the effect of the face tilt can cause a superior defect and even the vice versa if the patient chin is not in the proper position we will be discussing in our in the further slides now here the point to be concentrated is this so here we see that there is a gray zone which is there which is basically seen prominently in the prominent brows or the ptosis in such cases we should tape the brow or we should tape the eyelid to get the better result coming to the other slide here we see that there is an artifact which is there but this artifact is because of the tilted disc so because of the peripapillary atrophy which is there this cause the artifact here is another picture of the same so the thing to differentiate whether it is a glaucomatous or not the glaucoma field defect will start from the arcuate region not from the optic disc side so this is one of the region or this is one of the thing which we can notice by performing the test so here is the another test which basically just by looking at the disc or just by looking at the blind spot we can understand that this is an enlargement of the blind spot not a glaucomatous field defect this can be mere a uh, artifact now here we will be discussing about the different positions of the patient which has to be there while performing the test so here is just a picture or a cartoon which just tells or gives information how is the normal or the correct position of the patient coming to the further slide we see here that the, when the patient is leaning forward now this is not a correct position of the patient because it will provide a poor ergonomics of the patient to perform the test and this can make the patient tiresome and the concentration of the patient will not be better on the test similarly when the instrument is too high again we this is very much important that the instrument should not be again too high and the chin rest is not supported then again this will lead to the inferior scotoma so here again the chin position has to be adjusted according to the patient height here when the machine is too low again so this is again the 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 chin displacement which is there and again this will lead into the superior defect now if the patient is too close again if the if the patient is sitting too close to the machine again ergonomically the patient won't be comfortable and this because this is a long stand or long time taking test the patient has to be comfortable in such situation the patient will try to finish off the test early by just giving a random response to the machine and this will again lead to few or the other kind of artifact which will be seen in the hvf report now here i would just like to uh, bring attention that here there is a date which is like november 17 with a vfi of 65 here we see that the patient is having a y arcuate defect again in the subsequent visit in 2018 the vfi is reduced now this tells us that the disease has progressed but once the patient is motivated for the test and the patient has given a better response then there is a reversal of the defect now this this again gives an information that how much important it is there for the doctor as well as perimetrist to give the information to the patient so the key point is a doctor and optometrist should explain the importance of the visual field to the patient and perimetrist should play a very critical role for the success of the visual field at last i would just conclude this session by saying that perimetry is automated but patients are not so anybody who is performing the test should give a human touch to the patient so that they can perform the test better thank you okay thank you dr sharma for this valuable uh, lecture but let let me ask a question is it uh, still important this visual field in the presence of oct 
I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, visual field, it will start uh, to deteriorate after uh, deteriorating of more than 40% of nerve fibers, optic nerve fibers. But OCT, it can detect this easily, early, earlier than, than visual field. So it's important, it's important, more important. I mean, I mean, my question is, does OCT will replace visual, visual field? Okay. Thank you for the question. It's a very good question. So here we need to understand that what we are quantifying. So basically the OCT, it's, 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 it's correct that OCT will pick up the defect earlier than the visual field. But what we need to understand is what are we quantifying? So basically OCT gives us the quantification, basically the quantification of the cells. But the other thing is, it is giving a structural correlation. So basically, there is a structural correlation, which is with the which we calculate by the dying of the ganglion cells or how much the amount of tissue is damaged. But still, the functional correlation has to be made. The functional correlation is can be done only by the perimetry test. If you ask, then the 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 perimetry is basically for evaluation of the function functionality of a tissue, whereas the OCT is basically for the structure damage of the tissue. So we cannot mix these two things. It's correct that OCT is very, uh, is very effective in picking up the damage before, but it also de equally depends that how effectively the OCT is done, what is the signal quality of the uh, report or the scanning signal, how effectively the technician has performed the test, whether the zones which has to be covered was proper or not, were there no artifacts during the procedure. So all these things play very important role. But what we need to understand is the HVF and the OCT are the two different machines which check two different parameters. One is the structural parameter which is checked by the OCT, whereas the functional parameter of the tissue is checked by the visual field. Hope I have answered your question. Yes, it, they, they are different machines. But I mean, I mean, uh, OCT, it can detect earlier yes. nerve fibers yes. destroy, destroy. Destruction yes. of the early, early nerve fibers. And the visual field, it can defect after 40% damage of the optic nerve. I mean, I mean, optic nerve, nerve fiber layers and uh, neural rim, it can be detected very early as a fibers by OCT. So OCT, maybe it will replace visual perimetry in the future. It, it it is very tricky to say that whether this will replace because the because the method or the motto of checking the two is different but yes if you ask the OCT is a bit comfortable it's not that time taking but if you want to just uh, have a comparison definitely you someone can go ahead with the OCT but all those parameters which I have told should be considered for uh, preferring OCT better than HVF but if you still ask that the uh, the machine cannot replace each other but yes to have a sooner or a quicker assessment of a patient without wasting much time definitely OCT will be better okay thank can you tell me please in your experience uh, what is the most common artifact that you face in your uh, daily uh, uh, the most common artifact which and what advice do you give the the doctor uh, to suspect this artifact and return it to uh, repeat it again with the technician? So, uh, very good question. So, thank you for that. So, basically, the artifacts which we see is like whether it will be false negative artifact, which I have said as a like clover leaf pattern or some kind of black spots which will be there or a rim artifact. So false negative is uh, mostly seen because the patient will be inattentive or in the initially the patient will be very active, but at the end of the test, the patient response will be poor. So we will know that, okay, like this is a false negative. And even if we are seeing the defects in the visual field, we ask the patient to come again with a fresh mind and to repeat the test again. Whereas the other artifact which we see is like a rim artifact in which the, the lens uh, position is not placed properly. So that also we can, uh, we can uh, find it easily. But yes, the most of the artifacts which we see and I have tried to cover is the artifacts which we see, like the false positive, which is a white scotoma, 
the black scotoma which is a clover leaf pattern or a, because of the excessive of false negative and the rim artifacts so these are the basic artifacts which we see day in day out well, um, uh, uh, i would like to thank you for participating in our conference thank you thank you for the question I think uh, we miss in this uh, lecture is to uh, uh, correlate the optic nerve damage with the uh, visual field damage to see is this uh, visual field damage related to the optic disc to other pathology. We should have the optic disc. And if we see a not not corresponding to the optic disc, we should think of another cause of the visual field change. Yes, so as I have discussed in one of my slides, I would just like to show again that the artifact which we basically see. So here is a kind of artifact which we see is like the peripapillary atrophy. So this peripapillary atrophy result to such kind of defect. So one should not be just scared that a patient is having a very severe kind of defect which is there. This can be a part of the peripapillary atrophy which is there at the disc. But yes, the anatomically, if we see if there is a superior arcuate defect, the, the visual field will have an inferior defect. So both have of it having a correlation is like opposite. If there is a superior anatomical defect, there will be inferior field defect. If there is an inferior anatomical defect, there will be a superior visual field defect. Thank you so much. We appreciate your cooperation with us in this uh, by this good lecture. We hope to see you again in our next uh, lectures. Thank you so much. Thank you. المحاضرة القادمة الدكتور محمد سعيد الحميري الدكتور محمد طبعا أنا أقول إنه الجندي المجهول اللي إحنا فيه مجهود كبير جدا يعني على رأس اللجنة